Hey guys and welcome to a new video today update on the volatile dad auto miner slash yeah uh what the fuck are bosses right so i hope you had a lot of fun watching uh, the early clips the intros the uh compilation of quick boss kills like i would say the uber elder king in one minute 37 which is actually one um animation skipped right so if you if you're able to skip two animations you can actually do it in 133 but this is actually the fastest that you can actually get but before we start with this video i want to say a big big thank you and shout out to mr attention um which created this wonderful music masterpiece what i call it from the path of exile legion soundtrack so make sure to check him out description uh description yeah links are in the description below like First thinking, then talking. Get this right, MBX. Okay, so links are given in the description below. Check him out, wonderful uh, soundtracks on his channel. All right, so since I know that a lot of people will you uh, will complain now, like, hey, MBX, you showed so many boss kills. Uh, what about a map? So we're just going to run a map real quick before we start off this video. Um, to uh, So I can show you guys how the map clearing with this build looks like. So we have here a Pit of the Chimera map, nothing too special. You're just gonna make sure that you're a caster, right? So that means you cannot just randomly jump into everything and just, uh, yeah, feel like a juggernaut, no. 
So basically it's a hit and run gameplay, right? So you're just like uh, running and triggering your mines and just keep on doing like that. You don't necessarily have to, um, like you don't have to aim with these balls, right? They are they are targeting their self, like the targets. So you're just gonna run around and just pop them. So here on the monolith, just spawn a couple of balls. And yeah, those mines will just search for everything uh, that is actually alive. Depending on the legion layout, you can actually clear everything uh, with those when you just stand in the middle. So maybe there's some body, something uh, somewhere at the side. So here, always make sure that you keep on walking. Always make sure to have a safe spot here and let your volatiles ki uh, kill the rest, right? Because these guys hit like a truck, as you know. So always make sure that you spawn your balls and just uh, try to just run away from these dudes, basically. Hey, don't, I don't want to exit this game. What the hell? Almost killed myself. So let's pick up the loot real quick. But as you see, damage is, is way more than enough, I would say. So let's keep on going with the map showcase here. So you have to think of the more you spawn, the more region you will get. And yes, I know that uh, 5k or something is not a lot of... Uh, like HP bull or at least like energy shield in this case um, but we still end up having like I think like 2700 regen per second right and this is a lot this is actually a freaking lot just make sure that you're like uh, playing as a caster so always spawn your mines and run around a little bit so you don't end up uh, somewhere dead in this side or when you flame dash into a mob pack so where is uh, the boss yeah, sometimes you should actually use flasks. I'm too lazy, dude. I'm, I'm such a lazy player. It's actually insane. So more here, more there. So when is this map so long? What the fuck? Hello, boss, sir? People are waiting for the map, uh, for the gear showcase. Want some more balls. More meeps. I think here we are, yeah, okay. So, for the boss, pretty easy. Spawn your balls and make sure that you start to recover the energy shield. You can do this also with the Sulfur Floss to get up. And then just basically instant phase the boss. The good thing here is we're just gonna stand in the middle. Because uh, the, the mines will actually trigger all those uh, bosses. Or at least like kill off the mobs. And once the ball stopped uh, to uh, move, you're just gonna wait until the boss spawns in the middle again. We have the next phase, so we're just gonna stay here, just hold down one button, and that's about it, right? So, next phase. Next phase, or at least like minion phase. So, you're just gonna keep on standing here, maybe pops your flask some uh, sooner or later, and just one shot the bosses. Okay, that's the map showcase. Pretty easy, straightforward, just hit and run, what I would say, or what I would call it. All right, so let's throw everything into... No, actually, it doesn't really matter. So how is this build working? I explained a little bit in the early stages of uh, the video, like the, the video that I uploaded like two or three days ago. Um, but I'm still going to try to make it uh, as uh, understandable as possible, okay? So let's just throw everything into here. So basically, how this works is a lot of cost when da uh, damage taken setups. So how this normally works, you're spawning corpses, right? Here's some corpses, there's some corpses, here's some corpses. Then you throw your mines. And then you trigger your mines, and based on the corpses and how many mines you have, you're gonna spawn those volatiles. So if you wanna run this as a normal build like this, you just have to like one, two, three to spawn balls. Okay, first spawn corpses, get the mines ready, detonate the mines. So we can take use of that if we're using cast damage taken setups with Skull's Brittle. So the Skull's Brittle is an item that you um get damage based on how much mana you spend, okay? So I'm spending like 173 at the moment. Basically the gloves doesn't count, I wanna explain that one, the mechanic with the gloves a little bit later actually. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're just having a certain amount of mana cost and you multiply that by four and this is the average damage you're getting from your Skull's Burdle to proc cast one damage taken setups. So one cast one damage taken setup is here with Steel Skin and Desecrate. Um, in the video that I uploaded uh, before that, um, people were saying like, why don't you spawn Desecrate with like Spell Echo or uh, Spell Cascade or something like that? 
uh, to spawn more corpses. Yes, this is correct. You would spawn like 15 corpses with one button press. The problem with Desecrate... <clears throat> sorry. The problem with Desecrate is that you have uh, stacks here. You see three stacks? Uh, so when I just uh, spawn the Desecrates, like one, two, three, now I have cooldown. I cannot use them anymore until I get the next stack, okay? So that's the problem. So yeah, I could spawn like 15 corpses at once, but... Uh, then I have cooldown and can no more uh, get those corpses uh, ongoing. And that's why we use a second uh, setup with Unearth, Greater Multiple Projectiles and Volley Support. Volley Support will give me two additional projectiles. Uh, GMP4 makes seven corpses per, um, per use of the uh, Unearth, right? So we're spawning like uh, here seven plus five is like 13 corpses every time we, we trigger the castle damage taking. And the third castle damage taking setup is on detonate mines. That means now we have, for example, the um, castle damage taking with a desecrate. So as soon as I'm popping my mines, I'm just uh, popping the corpses with me. Same with the uh, unearth here. Now we are popping even more corpses once uh, I'm getting enough damage from the uh, Skull's Brittle. And then we have another castle damage taken setup with detonate mines. So now I'm spawning the corpses, I'm laying down the mines and I trigger them with holding down basically volatile dead. The rest is on castle damage taken setup. So then we have another problem here, right? And that's just what I want to go over uh, with these gloves and also these two items. The problem is if we're just using regular gloves, right? Um, the mana cost is like 106, okay? So if we say like 106 times 4 is 424 and I need a total of 528 to trigger that, okay? That means I have to cast twice um, to spawn my corpses, to detonate my mines and so on, which is actually bad, right? So we need to make sure that our mana cost is high enough. So there are three possible uh, possibilities that we have. One would be the Fevered Mind that gives us 100% mana cost of skills. So if we put this one in here now, for example, uh, the mana cost of my Volatile Dead is 246, which is way, way more than enough. That's like almost a thousand damage that I'm getting every time I'm triggering or at least like use my, my setup, right? The problem with this one it's too much damage. Although I have like a shitload of reach and this is how this build works, I'm getting damage, but I'm reaching a lot. Um, I cannot really use that combination because this is just way too much mana and I'm like spawning four mines and I'm basically dead, right? So we need to find another solution than that. Um, and here I have two options uh, for you. Um, the Duadrus Malevolence, the upgraded gloves here, they have the tag 50 mana cost of skills. So if we equip this one, now we have 156. Uh, cal cal calculator, 156 times 4 is 624. I need 528. So either I can level up my cost when I'm shaken by one now, for example, or just leave it like that. But this way, you're gonna make sure that every time you're, you're using your mines, you're proccing all of your cost when I'm shaken setups. Or you take these ones, the Void Bringers. I got them with a Curse uh, Elemental Weakness on hit. That's why I take those ones. They have 40% increased mana cost of skills. So now I'm having 173 times 4 is 692. It's a little bit more uh, than the Duedris, but I just think the critical strike chance for spells and that kind of stuff and the energy shield that we're getting uh, is better than this one. Just make sure those have a role. It can have from 40 to 80% increased mana cost of skill. So you need to make sure to get them as low as possible. So now we're actually having enough damage, enough mana cost to trigger uh, all the cast one damage taken setups as soon as we're um, throwing down the mines, okay? This is the, the, the most important thing here. The next second most important, or at least like this is actually the most important, like proccing the mines, if you have lower damage or lower mana cost, you're just proccing them less often, right? The most important thing here is to have enough regen. And here we have the Saboteur Ascendancy, which is a Pyromaniac, which gives us 1% of life regen per second for every mine detonated recently. And we're detonating a lot. So basically like one or two, like two seconds or so, we have, we're full on the regen. So if I just randomly spawn now my uh, mines, you will see that I'm dropping down to zero on mana and I'm actually losing life. And once this 20% this is, is um, stacked up, you're gonna see that I have no mana problems anymore and no life problems. It's, it's just in the start a little bit. As you see, now I'm casting slower. Now the proc starts to ramp up. Now I have the 20%. I'm full on life. I have absolutely no mana problems. And this is the way you wanna uh, get this going. So the way I did it 
is when I was just uh, playing around with regen and how much damage do I get and so on. What I want to make sure is when I stand in hideout, I want to spam my volatiles without dying and without having too much mana problems. If I can do this kind of um, permanently spawning in hideout, I can do it in every map as well, right? And this is one of the most important things here. And yeah, let's, I think this is quite okay explained how you trigger the mines and how you get the region going. So you have to have more region than you actually uh, lose life here, right? So let's go over the gear real quick. We have this cold spurtle, as I said, with the mana spent um, taking us physical damage. I did not found a plus one volatile dead enchant. There is one on the market uh, going, going for a hundred, no, hundred exalts or one mirror. I'm not sure entirely, uh, but way too expensive and way too overkill. Yes, it would be more damage, but in the end, I have about, I would say 40 million shape per DPS with my current setup. The way, the way you, you cannot really calculate that, okay? Path of Building says I'm having about 400,000 damage, shaper damage per ball. So now we're gonna make sure how many, it, it's like hard to count here, right? How many balls do I have? So since we're having like uh, 10 mines placed, every mine triggers three corpses, three volatiles. Then we have the ascendancy that I'm uh, sometimes getting one more trigger out of one mine, which is ad additional uh, corpses. Uh, additional spawns of volatiles and a thing how I calculate it is I know that I'm spawning about I would say 8 to 11 balls per trigger okay sometimes it's 8 sometimes it's 7 sometimes it's 11 balls that I can trigger each time I cast so here we have 2 4 6 8 9 I think then we have 2 it's, it's like they're moving sometimes in each other. This is like 11, I think. So if we're just going to say like 7 to 11, let's say 9 nine volatiles per cast. So the way I do it, I'm waiting until I have my max spawns because I, I can hardly count here, right? And since these balls last for like, I think, 5 seconds, the only thing you can do is you get your maximum stacks up like right here, right? Now I'm having basically the maximum of balls. And as soon as I stop hitting my button, I'm going to count how many explosions do we have, okay? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 explosions here, right? That would mean uh, if we have 12 explosions uh, multiplied by the amount of balls, which is about 9 that we set per cast, is about 108 balls. Uh, and then multiplied by 400,000 what each ball is doing, about 300,000 without flasks, 400 with flasks, we're getting to about 43 million Shaper DPS in theory. Like, obviously, when you're spawning your balls and you now trigger the boss, uh, the mines, uh, or at least the volatiles, need a certain amount of time to fly to the boss. Some will expire once you start moving. But I would say roughly 40, 35 million or something on this build at the moment with this setup. Okay, so enough explained. So, volatile that plus one would be the best enchant here. But uh, yeah, have fun getting that. T totally not necessary. This is the best that I found. Because Cold's Brittle is not really an, an item that you enchant off, right? So I found here the buff um, from my Stone Golems, which is just more region, which is good. Then we have Blood Magic, Anger, Precision, and Clarity. Precision, uh, uh, only because of my Watcher's Eye, what I will talk about a little bit later. This is the stuff that we reserve on, man uh, on life here. Then we have Flame Dash, Fast, uh, Arcane Surge, and the Stone Golem that I'm having here, because the Stone Golem will give you flat regen. So it does work without the Golem as well, I think. Like, if we're just gonna remove that one for now, activate here. So this is now without the Golem, right? You see that I'm actually a little bit... Actually, staying at 50%. If I now pop my Sulfur Flask, I'm having 6% more regen, so my health will start to ramp up. But once I have the golem, I have another 100 something additional regen here. Um, so that's easier to sustain here, right? That's why I have the stone golem. And if you have the stone golem buff on enchant, which is quite nice, right? Um, yeah, flame dash, just arcane search as low minus in level one. This is actually not really the best option here because my flame dash is 21. So I can definitely get the arcane search to like level seven for even more damage, right? But what I'm gonna make sure is as soon as I use flame dash that I have my arcane search up. So, then on the offhand, cast one image taking detonate mines with Herald of Ash. Uh, just for the fancy explosions and the fire damage, the more fire damage that we're getting. Uh, 
which is pretty nice because we are using like this is like pure fire basically we have some chaos damage built in there but usually the base is fire damage so if we take a look at the weapons what did i do just uh, alt spamming until i get the shaped mod le damage is extra chaos i think you need item level 85 for those then just uh, regal and then you'll off and hope that you have the, the the ones that open and here then i have multi mod spell damage with extra chaos multiplier increased crit strike for spells and yeah, that's about it. I have this weapon twice. So this is the same weapon here. Then Chevron's wrapping since we're low life. The most important thing here is chaos damage does not bypass your energy shield. Because with 140 life, as soon as something with chaos hits me, uh, I can have a million energy shield I will be dead. So I need this chest here uh, that the chaos damage will pop into my energy shield before that. Then we have our normal Volatile Dead setup with Volatile Dead. Then we have Trap and Mine support, Remote Mine, Mine Field, Conk Effect and combustion support. Combustion gives like a debuff uh, on ignited enemies. My volatiles do ignite, so it's just some extra damage here, right? All right, for uh, the amulet, which is the presence of Chayula, I got mine with discipline, uh, increased aura effect. It means that my discipline gives me more energy shield. Not necessary at all. It's just some min-maxing here, right? So um, the thing here is we're gonna transform a portion of our life, which is 20%, to energy shield. We're stun immune. We get a lot of chaos resistance. It's like Shafts and the Press of Chayula go hand in hand in build since quite some time. Not 100% necessary, but still super nice amulets to have. For my rings, um, I have here um, two mods, or at least one mod, that are coming from the temple. It's the Gua Telitsis mod, which gives me uh, energy shield and 0.4 regen. So what I want to reach is the most regen as possible. The more region I have, the more energy shield that I have, the better, okay? So um, here I have this mod here, just multi-modded with damage taken, gained this mana uh, over four seconds when hit, same as on the other ring. The rest is just resistance or whatever I need. The thing about this mod is we're getting constant damage here, right? So every time I'm using my attack, I'm losing energy shield because of this cold spriddle. The damage that I'm taking will not only trigger the cast damage taken setups, it will also trigger the, the percentage of damage taken gained as mana. And this is a mod that I have on my Watcher's Eye as well, which is the most important mod here, which says 20% of damage taken gained as mana plus 12 from the rings makes it 32% of the damage what I'm getting I get back from mana. And this is how I, uh, why I'm having such an insane amount of mana regen. Uh, then here I have an unset ring with my just standalone righteous fire. This is something you can use uh, before bosses, like you're just gonna spawn your balls and before you're gonna go pop your vile righteous fire and just move to the boss and your volatiles will just demolish the thing, okay? So then, as I said, Voidbringer Gloves or uh, Doedris Melovalence. Um, I got mine with uh, early weakness on hit, which is just uh, more damage, basically. I have your cast on image taking, steel skin and desecrate and the standalone discipline here. Uh, the belt is a recovery rate belt, so the 20% energy shield recovery rate helps us. So we are, like, if you say, like, you're getting, like, let's say 100 energy shield regen per second, right? With this one, I'm getting the 100 not in one second, I'm getting it in 0. Point something seconds. So I'm just regening faster. And then just multi-modded with, like, damage and flask effect and 2% regen uh, per second during flask effect, which is also pretty nice. Uh, on the boots, most important thing here, regen enchant, right? So, regen, 2% of life and mana per second if you were hit recently. So, we're hitting ourselves non-stop, okay? So, as soon as we pop our first volatile, we got hit and regen counts in. And the rest, move uh, like movement speed, energy shield, resistance, whatever you, you want to have. With cast one damage taken, unearth. Greater multiple and volley support to proc as many uh, corpses as possible. So we have uh, corpses for our volatile deaths here. For the flask, I'm using a Tyrus Promise for uh, the alias extra chaos and some, some leech here. What The leech doesn't really count that much, but uh, the alley damage is extra chaos. So for flask with freeze immunity, the consecrate ground that you're creating gives you 6% life regen. And since we're using the um, Salad's Oath, we're getting the regen to our energy shield. Then we have a diamond flask since we're a crit build with bleed immunity, a wise oak. Make sure that you're, uh, either you're balanced like I am or um, your fire resistance is higher than the other one. So you're going to get the 15% penetration on your fire damage because this is what we want to have. And uh, movement speed, uh, quicksilver flask. So one thing I really want to make sure here, right? 
Uh, this build is purely for uh, killing bosses within less than a second, right? Because as I said, I have like 43 million Shaper DPS, which is by any means not necessary, okay? Completely overkill. That's why I would actually say, like, you have to think of, you need more regen. How do you get more regen? More energy shield, okay? So, uh, the thing is, we're always going to get a fixed amount of damage, which is our mana cost multiplied by the, the 4 because of the uh, Skull's Brittle. So, if I have 10,000 energy shield or, or 1,000 energy shield, the damage that I'm getting will be the same, okay? But the region scales with our energy shield. So, the, what I would definitely recommend is using energy shield items get an uh, a titanium spirit shield for example with like resistance like this with a dual wield um, i'm only having 65 resistance when i'm popping my wise oak i'm over cap but you're not gonna always have your flasks up so i'm playing super risky right please take a shield here take this shield you're gonna have a lot more energy shield like if i just switch this from 5.1k uh, to 6.1 it's just a thousand energy shield uh, f coming from the shield here um, and you can take other items that are just giving you more and more energy shield okay this variation with dual wielding yes it is a lot more damage that's true um, if we're gonna say numbers here we have like without herald of ash because it's um, into the weapon here we have like 114,000 with the shield I'm running 78,000 so yeah we're gonna lose a, a quite a portion of our damage but if we're honest if you're having a 40 million shaper DPS or 20 million shaper or 15 million shaper like everything here is completely overkill okay every build that has like a million shaper dps kill can clear all content okay so i would definitely recommend getting more energy shield items more survivability to make this build more enjoyable because 5000 energy shield is not a lot okay check let's talk about the skill tree ascendancies as i said pyromaniac with the region most important then second important here the uh, mine notes and then third with uh, the blind here which is also ni a nice uh, layer of defense then uh, path of building link is in the description below let's talk about the watcher's eye real quick as you remember from the first part i had a triple triple uh, clarity jewel what i said is completely overkill right and here i'm only having one single clarity mod and the, the second thing I wanted to look is the energy shield recovery rate while disciplined. This is the same effect as on uh, the, um, the belt here with the increased energy shield recovery rate. So recovering faster, okay? And then I found one with precision on top of that. That's the reason why I'm using precision over here. If I wouldn't have uh, this watcher's eye, I would probably skip uh, precision. Or you can also let it in because you still get like global critical strike chance. Since we're a crit build, that's not even that bad. Then what else to say about the build here? I'm having just a uh, increased mag um, energy shield, then LA damage, and yeah, uh, resistance twice actually because I'm lacking resistance a lot. Uh, then I have here an efficient training that is converting the intelligence in radius to strength because I'm lacking a shitload of strength. If I just remove this one, I'm having 24 strength. Right? And the cast when I'm taking taken setups, the stone golem, they need like more than a hundred. So the easiest way to fix that is with this jewel. So all my intelligence nodes here are converted to strength and I'm having like a hundred strength just from this jewel and I can activate everything here, right? Uh, then what else do we have? Nothing too special over here, to be honest. Yeah, as I said, part of the building link is in the description below. And if you're wondering, wait a second, I was just thinking of something that I wanted to mention. Yeah, Wicked Ward. Um... Wicked Ward is something that your uh, recharge rate, so you have the energy shield regen, which you convert from the Celt's Oath, but usually the energy shield builds half recharge. It means when I'm stopped taking damage, uh, I will have the recharge and this will um, fill up my energy shield, right? But this is completely useless uh, because I'm constantly damaging myself, right? And when I constantly damage, I never get recharge, okay? This is also why this jewel here, uh, you see here, increased energy shield recharge. This is completely useless, this, this mod here, right? So let me get my HP to full again so I can reserve my stuff here. So, what else do we want or have to talk about uh, in this build? We talked about the gear, the skill tree, the jewels. As I said, Path of Building Link is in the description below. 
Uh, let's talk about the bandit choice, which is obviously help Alira. We are a crit build, so we want to have the crit multiplier and also the all resistance. Pantheons, I'm taking Solaris, which is not even upgraded. Uh, but Yugal is the more important. If you're going to uh, want to farm Uber Elder with this one, so you have to reduce cold damage taking uh, if you've been hit recently. Uh, for the cosmetics, the full transcendent set with uh, the helmet, the body armor, gloves, and boots. Double Transcendent Dagger, what I'm missing here is one of the Celestial Weapon Effects. Then we have the Transcendent Wings, here I'm missing the Sin Talon Helm Effect, or this weird horns here, whatever. Then we have the Stygian Volatile Dead, Wasteland Flame Dash, Clockwork Golem, Gore Herald of Ash Effect. We have the Celestial Aura Effect, Monolith Aura Effect, Soul Nexus, Celestial Righteous Fire. Nothing for Desecrate and for Discipline, we have now a Bubble. That's great, awesome. All right. So, is there anything more here? I hope not. I hope you enjoyed this kind of build. It's a little bit more than 200 IQ. It's actually 200... No, it's actually 420% uh, IQ, which is actually good. Okay, so... <laughs> As I said, Path of Building link is in the description below. Um, a big, big thanks. Shout out to Attention again for uh, giving me the permission to use his music in the intro clip. And yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.